So, you see this logo in Interception. So you finally thought it's time to catch up with that story you've been holding out for a long, long time. And then this happens. But in order to get through Special Interception, you need to get through Stage 16. So let's do that together. So the first thing you need to do is get duplicates of the units you already have. I'm so sorry, but there's no other way around it. You need these levels in order to have enough stats to basically advance throughout the entire story. But uh, my luck is utter butt. So what the hell can I do to get these LBs? There's a little pity system, if you would even call it that, called the Ticket Shop. It's basically located above the Defense Outpost, uh, right under the Cash Shop. One of them will be the Ticket Shop, which you need 200 of. Yes, 200 summons, regardless on whether you get SR, R, or double SR. Though, do not be mistaken, the 200 gold tickets, however, give a new unit, not an LB. They did the nice thing and actually will give you an actual playable unit if you have zero copies of it. Some people might think, oh, you get LBs from the silver tickets, which is this right here. So the same must apply to the gold tickets. Once that's done, you'll notice that apparently your advice actually breaks the 10 cap. What I mean by that is, if you've been advising your units, you know that there will be the caption max like directly above the bar and you can't proceed any further. However, even though limit breaking your characters already increased your stats by a flat 2%, this to go even further, which means it'll increase your stats based on what you already have equipped on your character. That includes gears, the uh, recycling room uh, thingamajig, and so forth and so on. Once you unlock the outpost, you'll also unlock the recycling, which actually gives your Nikkei's way more stats than it looks. The base one actually gives off base HP, which is really nice, but apparently there's also, uh, depending on which class your Nikkei's come in, there will be defensive stats and there will be offensive stats. But all in all, depending on what level these things are, they will actually affect your gameplay and actually will help with higher level and game content, which you can get from the current ongoing event. Next one would be leveling up your skills. There's the common misconception in any RPG that by leveling up your character, you level up your skills by default. That doesn't work so much for Genshin and Nikkei. Skills are a separate thing all on their own, which requires resources, which you can get from the sim room or from the current ongoing event. Which is why right after you purchase the summon ticket, skill cards are the next priority you should purchase in the shop. However, you need some elemental skill cards as well. Like any gacha game, Nikkeis have their own elements to each Nikkei. So if you want the elemental skill cards, you can purchase it in the arena shop. This is why you should always do the arena as well, because you can get this currency, which you can trade off with the elemental skill cards, which you can get up to 25 singles at a time, or you can get this crate, which allows you to choose which elemental skill card you want. Do keep in mind this is a bit more expensive than the rest, but hey, you can choose which skill card you want. So I don't know about you, but with how random LBs in case come and go, it's a win for me. With how scarce resources are at this point in time in the game, you might want to reset your common shop. Your common shop is located, well, within the shop again. You can press this button right here to reset the shop with zero gems. This might not affect a lot, but with resources being super scarce at this point in time in the game, well, you might want to do this anyway. Especially when you get cores for both, it really comes in handy. So with that and desperation in the way, you decided to open crates. all of your crates well except for the red ones do not open the red ones so let's say you're in a limited time character banner and you decided to lb3 set character and you don't have enough gems because you apparently spent it on the last limited time character banner. So, what do you do? Well, there is an option called the Tribe Tower. You can actually get a double win from this. Other than the normal Tribe Tower, there's apparently these manufactured towers which are very much time-gated because you only can advance 3 stages at a time. For these Tribe Towers, you can only use these manufacturers' Nikkeis. So make sure you have units within the Synchro device that has burst 1, 2, and 3 from each respective towers. Unless you're of course like me and you're very unlucky with the Pilgrim one, which... Hey, what happened? I'm so sorry, mother. Yeah. So she has to solo the entire Pilgrim power by herself.
Other than giving you extra gems to spend, these also give you extra manufacture modes, which basically means that you can summon a specific SSR from that specific manufacturer. However, this does not mean it guarantees you said SSR. This just means that you have a chance of getting an SSR from that specific manufacturer. There is still a chance of SR. So, open these molds at your own risk. You either could get lucky, or you can get pure depression. So you've opened all of your crates and your star on resources. You already reset at the common shop, and you still have not nearly enough resources to upgrade your Nikkei's. What do you do? Well, there's apparently the reset button for leveling up your Nikkei's. You can take whatever Nikkei's that doesn't have the required LB, reset their levels, get your resources back, and invest that in a new Nikkei that has the LB requirements. Take that unit out of the synchro device and level them up as much as you please. Or as much as your resources allow you to. Despite being an F2P, this is a time saver. Besides, it only costs 10 gems. You can get that much or more in dispatches if you max out your outposts already. If you haven't yet, pause this video and find all the buildings with this video right here. Get cubes. Cubes are very much necessary. They have a base stat increase and they have a big buff to your characters. You need these cubes. It doesn't even matter if the cubes aren't suited to their kit, but these cubes also have base stats that increase your Nikkei stats, so it doesn't really matter. Just put it on whatever Nikkei you want. Obviously, if you want the maximum potential based on their skill kit, we'll fit it to whatever type they are in. But even without that, the stat buff is huge! So how do you level them up? Well, you can get all the base cubes up to level 2 by default if you completed all the lost sectors up to sector 9. So, uh, how do you get it even further? So that you can get more stats, which means more skills, which means more buffs, which means, well, easier time. What you need to do is join an onion. I mean, union. So these onions are located above your friends right here. These onions are the only way you can get cube upgrades. You can only trade the batteries in the onion shop right here. And remember, different batteries for different cubes. Now, which onion to join? Well, what I would recommend is at least a level 4 onion. Now, that's not to say you couldn't join a level 1 or level 2, but the thing is, you need at least some active players in order to do the onion raid, which is the main source of income for these currencies in order to trade the batteries. Make sure the players within the onions are at least 70% active. It doesn't even matter if they're not that high level, it's the cheese that counts where you have to cheese 5 stages of different bosses and you need to do this up to 5 times so that's a total of... 25-ish bosses if you want to get the maximum amount of on your own points within the shop. Well, you eventually crawl your way to the boss in chapter 16. Well, you chase through everything in the game so far. This is gonna be a breeze, right? Oh no, what should I do? Remember your training. The best defense is a good offense.
もう死んでいる何So after all that hard work, you finally did it. The boss is dead. Special interception is unlocked, and you're done. You're finally, finally done. And so you're about to have the easiest time of your life farming T9 and T10 gear, right? <laughs> That is, of course, until you remember that hard mode exists in the main campaign, and it could also level up your outpost defense. So, there's that. Thank you guys for watching. I would like to know if you guys like this type of storytelling, or would you like something like the previous video, which I would link right here somewhere. Uh, if you think something's missing, it's probably in that video. And this is all made possible thanks to you guys commenting on my previous videos, so do comment on this one what you would like to know in our next guide video. Until then, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys around. This is Dr. 26 signing off. See ya!